If you understand this wiring diagram and how it translates to actually wiring the Huffner's control panel, then you don't need to watch this video. But, if you're curious about one of the most confusing and counterintuitive control panels in the guitar world, then this video may help. After 12 years of no problems with my Huffner, one day I touched the bridge pickup and heard the unmistakable loud ground fault buzz. I fixed that, but I still dug into the wiring of the control panel in case my fix didn't work. What I discovered was that this base is infamous for its confusing and counterintuitive control panel. Also this wiring does not offer the flexibility that modern guitars have, but it is iconic for Paul McCartney's early sound. This isn't going to be a tutorial on electronics and how things like potentiometers, capacitors, resistors actually work in guitars, other than just say what I think they do. The first thought thing about the bass is that the panel labels hint on how it should work, but it doesn't work that way at all. If you move both the bass and treble switches to the on position, they should both be on, right? But there's no sound at all, and when the switches are both in the off position, both pickups are suddenly on, and each pickup's volume can be adjusted only when the target pickup switch is on and the other pickup switch is off, does the target pickup work? The other switch that actually makes a little sense is the rhythm solo switch, because when the rhythm switch is selected, it is quieter than the solo position. So the secret is that once you understand how the pickups are wired, that the tone characteristics of this guitar are totally baked in. You cannot control the tone of each pickup, the only thing you can control is which pickups are used, and how loud each one is. Let's take a look at some of the electronics and hardware in the control panel. First, the switches. As you have seen, there are three sliding switches. The particular model of these switches have only two positions, up or down. They are actually called on on switches as their positions open up wiring possibilities by connecting four of the six terminals and disconnecting others, like you'll see. There are six metal prongs protruding from the bottom of the switches. These prongs are called terminals, and they are what gets connected to the wiring. Now we'll look at illustrations to look inside the switch. Looking from the bottom of the switch you can see, the white rectangles, each one a terminal. Now I've superimposed a representation of the switch above as a brown frame around two parallel metal connectors inside the body of the switch, called poles. The poles connect two terminals on each side. These poles move in synchrony as the switch is moved from one state to another. Note that both positions connect to the two middle terminals. Next, capacitors. At a high level, capacitors. The yellow cylinders here, but capacitors come in different shapes and colors. Let the high treble frequencies from the signal source pass through and damper the low bass frequencies. Where you place the capacitors in the circuit, let them do two things. One, if the capacitor is part of the ground circuit, it throws away those high frequencies, leaving only low frequencies, which is what you want in a bass guitar. Two, if the capacitor is part of the signal circuit, it throws away some of the low frequencies, making the signal brighter. Next, resistors. I believe resistors work by cutting down the strength of whatever signal is running through them. Both volume knobs are potentiometers, commonly called POTS, are variable resistors that cut back or allow the pickup signals and therefore change the volume. If a resistor is in the pickup circuit, the volume would be reduced. If a resistor is in the ground circuit with a capacitor then maybe it lessens the effect of the capacity. I see the resistors as tools to make adjustments in both the tone and volume in this bass. Pickups. And just to state the obvious, the guitar has two pickups. The neck pickup, closer to the middle of the strings, delivers warm, bassy tones. The bridge pickup delivers brighter, treble-focused sounds. Both pickups connect with just two wires, one for the signal and one for the ground. Let's finally look at the wiring. I know these animated illustrations can be confusing. I know because I kept getting turned around to. These wiring animations depict the business side of the control panel, as it would look to a guitar technician with a soldering gun in hand. We'll start with the view of the panel by the guitarist. From that view, the bridge volume knob is on the right, the neck volume on the left, and to turn on rhythm and the pickups you move the switches down, completely labeled and logical. And as the panel screws are removed, the entire panel just flips out easily and looks like this. This is the flip view of the panel. And now here is an illustration we'll be seeing. From this view, the bridge volume knob is now on the left, the neck volume on the right, and to turn on the pickups and rhythm option, the switches are positioned at the top. To help you keep things straight, an illustration of what the guitar player sees is depicted on top with the wiring diagrams below. 
In the diagrams that follow, the signal wiring that conducts the current is gray, the grounding circuits are green. Again, the switch terminals are white, although I grayed out some because they are never used. And like you've seen before, the switches are brown frames around the two parallel gray poles. Now, with all these wires and possible connections, there is one, and only one place where the signals from the pickups must end up. That place is here, where the signals leave the guitar along with the ground wire on their way to the amplifier. So, let's first take a look at when both pickup switches are on. Since that's the oddest thing about the Huffner panel, you already know that this will make both pickups silent, and we'll move the rhythm switch to solo whose wiring is simple. Okay, let's go. Now you've just seen why there is no sound in this what should be obvious configuration. Well, probably not. So, let's take it a little slower, with one pickup at a time. It's pretty easy to see. A loopy but direct shot to a terminal on the middle switch but the terminal connects to nothing, and so the signal goes nowhere. Electric currents need a complete circuit to work, and that is normally from the guitar to the amplifier. Also, electric currents follow the path of least resistance, and a dead end is a giant resistor. Now let's turn off the neck pickup by flipping its switch, leaving the bridge pickup on, and watch what happens. With the neck switch off, there is no longer a dead end for the treble circuit but instead a road to a long crazy circuitous trip to the amplifier thanks to connecting to a pole from the middle switch. Ignoring any dead end pads, you can follow the gray wires going through the yellow capacitor, and it then reaches a signal output. And what does the yellow capacitor do? As I mentioned before, inline capacitors allow high frequency signals through, and filter out low frequency, or bass signals. This makes the sound from the bridge pickup even brighter. And finally, for the bridge pickup, Let's take a look at turning the rhythm switch on. You can see that the signal took a path through one of the resistors, in effect dampening the volume and also removing some of the bass. It again avoids a dead end and then goes right to the signal output. But you may notice that the signal path also connects the ground. This connection may throw away even more of the signal and possibly recovers a little more bass tone by throwing away higher frequencies. I'm not 100% sure of this, but the Huffner engineers could have just as well not added that extra resistor. I think that this was all part of balancing the output tone for a lower volume. Anyway, having the rhythm switch on reduces the volume somewhere between 70 and 80% by my eyeballing the audio wave displays. And that's all for the bridge pickup. Now for the neck pickup, let's start by resetting both the bridge and neck switches back to on and the rhythm switch to solo. Let's see why the neck pickup doesn't make a sound. That's easy to see. Another dead end and no sound. So the solution to hear the neck pickup is to turn the bridge pickup off. And here's what that looks like. And again, with the bridge switch turned off, the switch's pole connects to the previous dead end pole and provides a new, round trip, path to the output. See how as always, the signal avoids dead end paths. It could have taken another path to the left in this diagram, but that path included a resistor and three jumps to another dead end. But just like with the bridge pickup, there's more to the story. When the next signal path connects to a middle terminal of the middle switch, the switch pole also connects to ground, and that connection to ground includes a capacitor and a resistor. With that combination, some of the signal strength is lost, but since the capacitor throws away higher frequencies, this in effect makes the remaining signal even more bassier. And I'm guessing again, but the strength of the resistor was titrated by the engineers to get the tone effect they desired. And to wrap up with the neck pickup, let's flip the rhythm switch to on. Again, the same long path, but now with a side trip to the same resistor and ground path as the bridge signal, and then finally to the output. In summary, when you use each pickup separately, besides their placement in relation to the strings and bridge and the volume. You have no control over what tone comes out of the guitar. And for Paul McCartney, the bass pickup tone with the rhythm switch set to solo was just fine. Well, the last thing I'm going to cover is a way that you have more control of the tone. And I'm pretty sure this was planned over 60 years ago. And that way is to set both pickup switches to off and the rhythm switch set to solo. Now both pickups are active. 
As you can see here, with the exception of one treble capacitor, there are no other capacitors, or resistors, or signal grounding in the circuits for both pickups. This is almost the raw sound of the guitar, and its pickups. This means if you have the skill to hear differences before the amplifier is adjusted, that by adjusting the volume for each pickup you can blend the tones from each pickup to arrive at some tone, other than what is built in. After going through all of this wiring today, what do you think might happen with both pickups active and the treble volume is turned down to zero? Well, the output from the bass pickup is louder. That's what the bridge pickup off and the bass pickup on, even with the rhythm switch at solo. And that's because there is no connection to ground that drains some of the signal. But it also means that the tone won't be as bassy. It's a matter of preference. I hope you might have learned something, and that I didn't make any glaring, stupid errors or assumptions. If I did screw up, then let me know in the comments. Thank you.